Okay, so who called it? Anybody here for that? Did we call the meeting in order? Okay. Okay. If that's the case, then we'll move on to the next one. Not normally be why a chair. <laughs> since 8 14. Okay. What time shall we declare it? Okay. I'm just going to say 8 15. Okay. Everybody have enough copies so that they can. All right. or just more to of um, the same changes? There are a couple more changes. <laughs> Minor, but um, and then a clarification I need to go over. Uh, so <coughs> the first thing that Al just passed out is um, pertaining to the railing that we go along the top of the parapet wall at the garage roof deck. Um, that was previously approved as an aluminum rail that was going to be of the same material and design um, that the fence around the property is. And Out here? Yeah, correct. Um, actually, no, that's the building. Down down. Down. Oh, sorry, yeah, around here. Yeah, that's the building. Um, so, main, primarily for structural reasons, but also the fence company didn't feel that that was an appropriate material for this. Um, so we'd like to actually... They have excellent judgment. <laughs> <laughs> well, in terms of, like, its stability and, uh, and how, I mean, it was intended for fencing around a property, not really as a stable safety guardrail. So we're proposing um, to now construct it out of steel components, which would match the deck at the north end of the building. Um, and I have... Of those, of those parts, which um, which is also included in the photo on the last page, but I have them here. Um, do you want to look at them? Well, I'd like to know what the original approval looked like compared to this. Okay, so let's go this for the top of the garage? Correct. And this is the, a photo of the existing fence, just so mm -hmm. you can see. That's a drawing of the shorter version, but basically this is the tall fence that was installed, and they'd be cutting 18 inches of it. So this is an aluminum fence, um, which again, it has kind of the, the vertical is projecting above a top rail. Um, what we'd like to do with the new design is have a continuous top rail that's more user friendly as well. So if somebody's standing at it, or looking at it, yes, nobody's getting impaled on the uh, on the um, portion. So, so the components are a little smaller in scale. Like I believe these um, verticals on the aluminum fence are about three quarter inch square, whereas the components on steel made out of steel or half inch square with one inch square um, intermediate posts. Well it's a smaller scale fencing overall in any case. 
Correct. The height, is that what you're referring to? Yeah. So. we also had um, that piece of railing going down the stair as well as the north deck mm -hmm. is being made out of this seal as well so is it also the same as this stair correct yeah so I know when we met early on you know, there was debate over whether this should match the fence or the, the, the sail and I think there was some difference of opinion but ultimately voted to approve to have, have it match the fence, but now really for more technical reasons we're looking to. Well, I don't have any objection to that. Um, the, um, on the drawing, on this drawing here, where you show the side view of the supporting brackets that kind of bulge out from the front, would that be the same as the ones that would be on the front side of the garage? Correct, yes. And we won't be putting those on the outside of the north property. Um, because that would overhang them. Correct. Yeah. Um, basically, the, the wall of the garage is right on the property line. So, and there is a slight chance that we won't need those. We're going to try to drill through the existing cap and, and fill the block with concrete. But I would like to get them approved on the off chance that we do need them for some lateral support. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions? I think this is very minor modification. Right. All right. So they, yeah, and then so we don't have to do secret. No, the secret. This, the the, this is on, on the original. Okay. And I'm, anybody have any questions? I just what's so what is the total height that this is going to be coming off of the parapet? I um, see that it's forty-two off of the. Floor it's of the 17 oh, inches. 17 inches. Okay. So the parapet varies, it's 25 to 26, but mm -hmm. at its lowest, it's 25. So we need to be at 42 total height. Mm -hmm. So we're going to the higher of the two options. So you're going through three, three quarter inch ballast is one half inch. Correct. Yep. And the intermediate uprights are one inch square. So the ones that are actually secured to the wall. Do I have a motion? Can I just ask one more question? Sure. In the event that you aren't, that you do need to use these brackets, do they have to be bracketed to the outside or could they be bracketed to the inside? Well, they're more effective bracketed to the outside because the, the theory is if you're pushing against it, it's bracing against it. It's bracing against it. However, on the north side, if we are required to do that, we're going to put them on the inside. You are going to will be better than nothing so if you know if that's something that you object to seeing on the outside we could certainly do it on the inside throughout um, it's not a, I, I don't have a total objection to it but it does make it look a little more tacked on and less like a part of the whole kind of structure um, but I don't know how else I don't think that, you can make it look like a whole part of the structure. Yeah, and it's it's a fairly typical detail as far as well. Okay, I, I move to approve. Do I have a second? Is, are, is, are there additional? Yeah, we're we're taking them one at a time. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second. Oh, all right. So Sean, um, I'll vote. Yeah. Yes. Yay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Done. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. So these drawings reference the deck and windows that were approved at on the meeting on November 9th. Um, and I do have some minor revisions to the deck. But I just wanted to ask you about the, I never received an approval from the November 9th meeting. And I looked back in the files. There were no minutes on that meeting, but I watched the YouTube video of that meeting. Um, basically, you and Andrea and Sean were the 
when I was there. Mm -hmm. um, it was the egress windows that were approved on the door on the north deck. Um, and then I realized from watching the meeting that you were waiting for updated drawings from me, which you didn't get. Oh, so okay. these are updated to reflect what was voted on. But in addition to that, in addition to that um, the changes that we're looking for are to, we'd like to change the treads of the steel deck, which were originally called for as diamond plate solid surface treads, to um, a bar grade tread with a diamond grill, a diamond plate nosing. Um, so. Okay, so. so. All right, but so these are the changes to the to the uh, the drawing, correct? Or the uh, the windows that we had passed before, right? No, so then, and, but also, so it's in one set. What I've done is include the changes I'm asking for now, which is the change to the okay. But that's not going to be visible on these drawings. No, I have the touch. Right. So why don't you uh, let, let me have the, the cut sheet. really probably not going to be visible um, from a public way either, but nonetheless we have to get those right. in case they are. So that's the stair treads. Mm -hmm. The other thing is on the original plans, um, I think I had the dimensions for the vertical baluster at three quarter, but they're actually half inch square. But the pieces I just showed you. Mm -hmm. So that's correctly noted now. And also previously, um, I had the railing height at the 36 inches, but it has to be 42, which we discussed at that November 9th meeting uh, because it's a multi-family structure, but that is reflected now in these drawings. So you said it was three quarter inch balusters that are now half, half inch, okay. And then the up intermediate uprights are going to the only thing is, is that the drawing still shows three foot six. Oh, three foot six. Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to 36 inches of this. <laughs> okay. So, and then the last thing is we have three lights also on that north facade um, that we would like to get okay. three. Okay. So, um, Three lights? Oh, yeah, three, three lights. lights. Yeah, I There's see the two one. Mm -hmm. Three lights. 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 Three So that, those are the only changes, the addition of the light fixtures and the treads. Yeah. I have no objections. Anybody have any questions? I have no objections, but the, but the items that are, you know, clouded here, it appears that there may be more changes than the one they, about the uh, windows and things, or? Right, well that was changes? what Karen was talking about in uh, November 9th meeting. Oh, that was in the November 9th? What's the date of the drug? It's 3, 5, 9, 14. Right. Okay. So, on the November 9th meeting, I had Muntins on the windows, but the board voted to eliminate mm -hmm. the Muntins. So okay, that's... Because there's a, there's a the triangle 3 for... The correct, because I removed the Muntins to reflect what the board approved. Okay, so I can pull out the plans from November 9th if you mm -hmm. want to compare them. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, I have no objection. I have a motion to approve these changes. So moved. Second. Second. In favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you for your honesty. Move back to the <laughs> <laughs>
Ships passing the night. Hi, hey, Andrea. Eli? Yeah, Eli's my yeah. my son. Your your child is who? Sylvia. Sylvia. Oh, yeah. all nice things. Thanks. Okay. Place existing collapsing fence with a new four foot cedar fence. Door. This is the same fence that was installed how many months ago? About three months ago at 29 Pine. Same manufacturer, same exact height. It's a falling down fence. Yeah, it's a mess. It's a lot of that. <laughs> I want my hair. Okay, so it's not just the the rear property line, it's around the entire uh, backyard. Around the, yeah, the parts of the side, parts of one side, and then along all one side along um, the Tompkins property. Mm -hmm. And then the part that's visible from the street is basically the two gates, which are on either side of the house, but they're, you know. And it's going back. in, you know, within six inches of the existing fence that is also all the way Yeah, the Tompkins side right now, actually, the fence is on her property at the moment, and we just had the survey done, and we're coming in to where to your we need to be. Yeah. It's, and it, it's there, and then it's falling in. Yeah, so that's the only That's the only part where it would change where it is. So just so I'm up to speed, you've been here before mm -hmm. with this fence? No, 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 no. Oh, other no. things? So, no. okay. Much, I was like, wow. Much, much more extensive. That took a long time. The entire addition on the back, yeah. the new dorm room. Oh, wow. Out. It's okay. one of the workman's houses. Yes. Yeah. Which looks great. Thank you. We love it. Have you noticed my flies? <laughs> yes, I have noticed your copies. And they're wonderful. Yeah. I live in Parent Street. Oh. And that old fence is really rotten, doesn't it? Wow. Uh, it and it's so hodgepodge. It's made from yeah, all kinds of materials. And <laughs> it's it's different on every, every tangent. Side. Is a yeah. different kind of fence. That's the fence in my yard. Yeah. We have places where there's three layers of different fence. <laughs> we had to put pieces of things that we had just to kind of Prop it. catch <laughs> so the dogs yeah. wouldn't escape. Yeah. And so that's why the four foot high. So big dog? No, they're little oh, dogs. No, but it, that's the height it is now, so oh. it's the same. Oh, oh, okay. We're not going. We're not going. So the fence will look like this all the way around. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the posts are yes, centered. Between, and then we'll have two. Uh, one side is going to have, you know, two gates, like you need to get back there, and then the mm -hmm. other will just have one. I think, and I presume the hardware on the gate will look like this proposed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. business. This was the photo that I actually got from Campanella. So that's the materials that they used. Well, actually, once it's installed, the only thing you'll actually see is the gates on either side. Right. That's right. So it's really the gates that are kind of the Thing that is of most interest to us. Okay, where on the map is it 
is 26. It's the second house in front five. Remember, this is the house yeah. that only had one dormer on the front, yeah. and they added the second one, and it had to be an egress window, yeah. so there was the whole issue of the the height from the floor and opening the interior. Yeah. We have a short staircase in there for egress. Yeah. Right next to the plant. It's called Piner's up here. No, not Piner Piner's. Um, okay. Sorry if I can't read it. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, this is Pauline. Look for West Bank. Okay. So I'm not kidding. This is. That's right. This is. Oh, it's right here. I don't, I'm sorry. This is pine. This is parsonage because our, our backyard right, backs our back up against yeah, right. the so second this is This is pine, and so it's this building right here. Exactly. The second, the the second, second one in from in. the corner. Okay. okay. Thank you. We also had an application years ago from the lane next door right on the corner. Okay. Um, so, anybody have any questions concerning this application? Um, I don't really have any questions. We, we allow for stucky fences to be used in rear yards, which yeah. this is pretty clearly a rear yard, and even the two pieces that face the street are really set quite far back on the, on the building. So, I think it would be different. Oh, if we wait, 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 it's wait. not stuck in though. It's, it's dog ears. Do I have a motion on the secret uh, status? Uh, fences are normally type two. Uh, I agree. Anybody? Uh, all right. Do I, uh, so, um, do I have a? Well, we have a motion. That was my second. <laughs> okay. So you second. All in favor of type two status? Aye. 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 That means technicality. Right. Yeah. <laughs> technicality, we have to get out of the way. Right. So, main comment, any questions or comments concerning the, the fence? If this were a six foot high um, stockade fence, I'd have a problem with the four foot high, which is the code. Yeah. I'm buying the. Do I have a motion to approve the application this time? Uh, I moved it. Okay. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Done. Okay. Thank you. Done. Thank Done. Thanks. Nice meeting. Nice you meeting you. Oh, so what types of seeds? puppies do you have? Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Papers. Papers. Sorry. Talking gardening. Something. But the, something. Cal the, ca the, ca the California poppies are annuals, and I, I have some perennial poppies, but they have to disagree. No, these have, the ones that she has, they're really specific. I just came up for this purpose. But they don't ship them as much. I would say Carolyn moved to approve the application was submitted. Yes. As submitted. Yes. Getting the hang of this. Okay. Um, 95 Main Street? 95 Main Street. Yes. Oh, 95 nice. Main Street. Are you 95? No. Uh, well, we are 10 minutes ahead of schedule, so. I saw the girl. Um, um, I don't, I actually don't even know who this person is. Or Handel's been, he's, uh, he owns a number of properties in the village. Yeah, but do you know who's familiar, representing him? No. It's 95 minutes on this side of Main Street. It's Solomon's it's Mine building. Oh, okay. If this is 85. Yeah. So yeah, 95 would be someplace on the wall. It's the, it's the mid-century jewelry stuff and Solomon's Mine. It's that long arcade building. Okay. Hmm. Um, okay, so... The last I heard they were just repainting, so I don't know what this application actually is. A replacement of siding, trim, and windows. Do we have an application? 
current It's a, it's a double hung this, window. This yeah. is for uh -huh. <laughs> you. Uh, my feeling is is that I don't have enough information to review this. Uh, I mean, he's looking to replace all the windows. It looks like a vinyl window that he wants to install. And PVC trim is there. And this is the National District. The applicant the one, by the way. Oh, wow. Sherry. And also he's talking about entombing the uh, asbestos siding. The asbestos shingles with cement board. I, I don't know how he plans on doing that. Is that all going to end up adding a certain Getting really depth? Thick. <laughs> yeah, it adds a certain dimension to it, so you have to, you know, retrim all the windows and stuff. Right. But it also on the front page of the application it says includes installation of new trim boards, composite PVC on the south and west side of the building. Right. South and side this of the is in the is National not, District. Yeah, it is in the National District, but the south side of the building is probably not even visible. Unless it's a corner, um, It's the property that rises next to Catherine's. Right. So, okay. from the street. Directly over. over. At one point. Um, yeah, the west side of the building would be very visible. Yes, okay. That, that does have asbestos siding on it. But the trim board is composite PVC and don't fly, right? In the because back of the building, they actually be visible well, too from around the street. windows. That's possible. I yeah. would assume he's replacing 48 of them, so I would assume that he's replacing all of them. Replace all windows 42, but it didn't say what the, what the. Yeah, it's an incomplete application. Right. So, uh, do I have a motion to table this until get some clarification. Sure. Yes. Let's Who made the motion? Uh me, Sean. Okay. I'll second you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
up in so, four minutes? <laughs> will we, no? We, they said if they show up in four minutes, will we see them? Yeah, I mean, if they, if they show up today, then I'll be more than happy to ask them the questions, but certainly uh, you know, I would like to see the, more materials with them. see the details on how he plans on entombing. You know, is there going to be a ceremony? Or Everybody gets to have something to the uh, time <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Uh, how do I write this in the minutes? Um, Sean, uh, Sean moved to table the application uh, because it was not complete. Okay, thank you. This is yours. Oh. Okay. Shall we move to go into workshop session? Workshop session? Okay, hang on, let, let me organize this and so we can put it back in the file. Okay. If we do it within the next minute, we'll be full we'll half hour session. <laughs> I'm so proud of us. We walked out of the office. Couldn't make the photocopier work. <laughs> Th this is called all the trustees. This was in the second a uh, current the application. second one, yes. <laughs> I'll have to ask her about that later. I don't understand it. Put the mobile one and rip up the room. She might have degrees in and I'm not touching it. <laughs> no, 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 she's already organized in a specific way. <laughs> in a very <laughs> particular <laughs> way. <laughs> um, okay, now on seven calling, uh, do we want to just take a quick look at that to see if the application is self explanatory? Yeah, sure. It's, okay. yeah. it's not a complicated Seven. Okay. Uh, okay, the, there's a note on here, decline to review wall because not visible from public right away as oh. to propose fence replacement. That's right. Yeah, I think, didn't we decide that, that we weren't going okay. to pursue that application? I will pass no, this around. You can take a look at it. We asked them because the, the, the fence was in such poor condition and they removed part of it. Yeah. So were they going to replace it in kind or were they going to you know, replace that piece in kind uh -huh. or a whole bunch of it in kind, or were they going to replace uh, the whole bunch of it in a different the, the application is incomplete because all they all he's got is the replacement for the retaining wall. Okay. And so that's, that's the, the only old thing. A, huh? That's the old application. Okay, so. So, no show, but it, it was an incomplete application. Okay, so absolutely. Goes back. Okay, so now we go back to work session, workshop. Okay. Do I know that you moved us into? No, I, I can't move things. I will make a motion to move okay, the workshop okay. session. Okay, uh, And I will second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So, 2925 Market Street. Come on down. Hello. Hi guys. Hello. Hello. This is primarily a progress report. Um, last thing to the uh, thanks to Karen for yes, thank you for her maps. <laughs> Sharing resources. Um, oh nice. Thanks so much. They show nothing. They show nothing. Yeah. The building doesn't show up on the building. Some there are also some there are some of those maps are uh, two sheets of gold screen, so there are some maps that are trying to do that. It's on the pages G Phillips. Oh. And so your property was the vinegar mill or something like that, or the pickle mill or something? My property was the, the pickle factory. That's great. And um, so on this map, there is nothing. 
but on this map, okay. I think that's the building. I think it's, well, okay. I think it's more in this area, so I don't know if that's something that doesn't exist. Anymore. Well, the thing, that, the thing that you have to remember is that this is the Our Lady, uh, the, the chapel in restoration. So the driveway is someplace here. Okay. So that line does not represent the property. Well, it, it could, but I mean, it's, uh, and this is the 1867. Yours, <coughs> Matt? But see, this one, this one doesn't have it. So this is the 1854. So we're well, talking about. Let's see if it's on the great map. <laughs> I'm just trying to think. Uh, it now has two wings, right? Oh, it always had from the beginning. It had two. It yeah. Yeah. The center the entrance, and then. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, now it's actually and then there's that thing. brick. It's the brick brick that, that is, um, has changed over time. Yeah. Yeah. Three of them. Mm -hmm. So that might be kind of the brick. It's well, it could be. Um, well, I, I, I think what it could be is that uh, the, the entrance to the, the house plus the brick addition, I think that's the thing that you see off to the side. Because you, you're talking about, uh, you know, at least the construction is about, appears to be in uh, this, that era. Okay. Well, no, I think that. The building is not on this part. Say it's the first half. Mm. 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 Okay. <laughs> um, so tell us what you have been able to find. So we did go back and do more probes. Yeah. And so, so these are what, what this shows, and I'll give it to you as an overview. So, so the, the um, rectangles in the interior, this one had been done, that had been done, this had been done, that had been done before. And then we came back and we enlarged this so that we could excavate. I mean, we're not. We didn't enlarge it past the joists, but we took up some of the flooring. Um, so we enlarged this, the, these two, and then we opened up this one as well. Um, we were already looking this way uh, at the, this foundation line. That's where the kind of solid foundation was with the cheeky. Um, we were hoping to find a similar condition here, but we didn't. We found joists that were on flat stones, uh, and the joists were about an inch off of the, the dirt um, below. So they were there was no evidence of a wall, and because of the nature of that flat stone, we weren't about to excavate underneath it and have it kept going. But it was just, they were just floating individual stones. Yeah. Did you do any any uh, excavation to the outside? Yeah, so then, so then we also excavated out here. Yeah. Um, and we excavated over on this side, hoping to see the bottom of this brick wall. Um, but about a foot below grade, we hit styrofoam because that's where the plumbing comes out. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, we started to excavate, but there's a, a very uh, there's a tree here that had very large roots, so that was the end of that. Well, so that's a kind of overview. Yeah. Right? Um, so the, there's a series of three drawings. Mm -hmm. uh, the first drawing is is still um, where we can see from the outside right here. Um, so that one is pretty much what you guys saw last time. The next one is, is this corner. So it shows the exterior uh, view. Um, and the, the grade is in line with, with the grade. So this concrete and that concrete is what you're looking at. And on this side, you're looking from the inside. Um, this is the joist. This surface of concrete is that surface of concrete that's looked. And then this is, you know, it's a hard to, almost impossible to represent the word rubble actually. It's just a bunch of, of funny stuff. 
Um, but we did get to the bottom of this concrete, which is just the 12 inches down. You can see it in this photograph. Um, we did not, I mean, we excavated on the interior as well. This was the soil, which in all cases is sloped up toward the perimeter. Um, but we took it down and, and went down right next to the stone. But we're, we're limited to being able to enlarge enough to be able to find like a whole stone or the bottom of it. And the other thing is that because they're dry laid, it's not like you can un you can underpin a rubble wall that's, that's right. mortared, but you can't under you can't go under a dry laid wall because it'll just drop out. Mm -hmm. And then the third location um, was was uh, here. So we both we looked at that on that side as well. So this is what the condition is there. This is in, in all of these cases the, the rim joist, which is the same as the, the sill plate. Um, is what this is what used to be here, right? So this used to be the sill plate and rim joist. That's what that concrete is doing now. And and I've drawn it as a, with an X here, but in this case on the east wall, so the the wall that has the bump out where the front porch is and, the, and, the, and that that entrance to it, um, that most of the sill plate was was gone. So what they did on that east wall is they they um, put brick on top of the rubble wall. Um, and then put concrete in front of it. In this photograph, you're actually seeing the form board that was in front of that, mm -hmm. that we sliced and, and took out to see what was behind it. Um, once that board reaches about here, then, um, I guess it's actually just inside here, then that room goes shows up again. So their coplanar is brick, this coplanar with that room joist. Um, but where it was rotted, obviously they just cut it out, and then they consult, try to consolidate for that and pour the concrete at the outside. Mm -hmm. So here you're actually looking at, at the corner. You're looking that way at it, and what you're seeing, um, oh, I'm sorry, that's not true. <laughs> this is looking this way, and what you're seeing is, is a brick on top of a piece of wood that's holding up the floor. Um, as well as behind that, there was brick that was, you know, the, the consolidated brick behind. So it was really jury with them. They have a lot of things down there. So in order to get this board out of there, we took the brick out, which was loose, um, and, and the board, and then we, we dug down. But again, we didn't, we dug down about 26 inches, but we didn't find the bottom of the rubble wall because we couldn't get large enough, and we also didn't want them to find So those are the probes that we've, um, Um, and, uh, did you ever get to the bottom of whatever the foundations were that, I mean, only, only this concrete um, And how far down was that? That was 12 inches, so if you go to SKO2. You can actually see the bottom of it because we, we got to the bottom of it. I like how you did this diaphragm. So what we did is we put a, a, uh, a long bolt horizontally through the wall and then we used that <coughs> as a benchmark because there's no, there's no window on that wall or anything. So we used that to you know, measure relative height. So so that footing, I mean, the footing we can measure with that, but it's, it's uh, more or less 12. It really varies because it was poured. They just excavated to a certain depth, and then they just poured on top of that. So that it does uh, undulate, and it probably gets a little thicker at the corner, but that's pretty funny to me, but if you going to approach things that way. But. <laughs> well, it, it just, you know, because um, I pass by it when I go to the train, and the rock on the cropping is not very, you know, it's fairly close to right there. It is. Yeah. So, I mean, you know how these rock on cropping work, they can dive too. Just yeah. There is. Could it, this, could it be that this, could it be that this property, that this building was moved from someplace else? I was wondering about that too, because it has that um, light look to it, except that there's the knobbing between the studs. The knobbing It would be oh, hard to do that. Mm. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it was, it was good. Yeah. Nogging could have been added later, because I mean, people added nogging thinking that it was forever. 
it, it could have or been, I guess. Um, there, I mean, there's just no, no way to, to know. But it's, um, I mean, it's certainly, uh, without the knocking, frankly, there's no shear capacity. I mean, the siding doesn't do that because it's more than that. So the, yeah. by block filling that void, you can actually. Well, that, well, that sure. also, I mean, you know, adding knocking was, goes back to Roman times. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the way it's true, too. Build. It seems unlikely that they would have gone to the trouble of moving this entire house, so just to use it as a... It's not big. It's actually quite small. Right, but to, just to use it as a kind of ancillary building and then take off all the inside siding, well, put in all of the nogging, and then put up a big wall. Yeah. Well, I mean, but they, they, they did. They did Seems like a ton of work. They did, re they did recycle like crazy back in those yeah. days. You know, yeah. so it, it, you, no, know, we do you know. never know. Yeah, there were the, the Garden Street houses, right, that were moved, presumably from West Point, like across the ice. Really? Yeah. yeah. And so they say. So they say. Good. I went to one of those places. <coughs> in a All very right. strange configuration. So I, I guess, what is it that you would like for us to consider? Well, we're still trying to figure out how to, how to go about doing this because clearly we need a foundation and we need a real foundation to get this thing in and we don't really see that, um, you know, given that, uh, you know, in this case that, that you can actually see the bottom of the stud here. This is the bottom of the stud. So it's held up by brick. Since there's no sill plate of any kind to hold on to. You can't just jack up the house because... There Where's the bottom of the stud here? So it's... This oh, is this the thing? Uh, yeah, this thing here. This yeah, really nice it. Which means that it's dropped because that puts it lower than the floor. And most of the other studs that we can see are toenailed into this, into the floor and the tiny roof. So there's no sill plate on the wall either. So the wall, you normally would have a sill plate. Yeah, but that, 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 that kind of goes, it goes to the theory that this thing was moved from someplace else. I think it's just so rotted away. Well, that's no, I think that's true. The most time. No, there's, 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 you know, typically you have, I mean, that's what, how we do it now, right? You have a stud, a sill plate, and you put that on top of your, whatever your subfloor is, and then below that you have the rim joist, right? Yeah. So that's what's gone. But this never existed. So the stud was oh, just, okay. just went down oh, right to the subfloor and it just toenailed oh. right back. So that so would, this, this it would be a very stud wasn't even like notched into move. the floor? Yeah. No. But this one has gone through that floor because the floor was run, and then they sh sense. they shorted up with brick. Um, so right. we talked last time about the option of you know salvaging the siding, and certainly we're on on the back side of the building um, where we're taking off that porch and we're bumping that out. Mm -hmm. That siding we could certainly you know be able to recycle that on the front of the building to, to fill in where we have you know one by twos that were used to replace their one inch by one and one and eighth inch um, pack. So I think we could do that. It's hard to imagine what we could say that would be of any merit because you're not going to see it. You're not going to, you can't insulate the building in that way because we're clearly we have to bring up the code in every respect. So you're really talking so about doing a reconstruction um, rather than a restoration. Yeah. Right? But if you were to pursue that, would you, given the conditions of the site itself, would you, I mean, you know, if you had a, a blank slate that you were then going to reuse the materials on, would you even be able to dig a proper foundation, do you think, with all these yeah, rocks right, and you, things? Well, all that would come out. But I, I, as far as the we don't know where that ledge is. Yeah. My experience with ledges is totally unpredictable. Yeah, um, yeah but and, you're not talking about putting in a full basement, right? No, 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 no. no, no. A no, we, space, we're, 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 you know, this isn't, something. yeah, this isn't, I can't even call this a call space, space right now because you can't get in there, but, but um, it's a look space. it would be, we just, what we need to <laughs> but do, you can we always tie into ledge it. wherever the ledge is. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Okay. And we can bolt into bolt that into and we can, you know, find a way to waterproof that as a, as a, you know, a space so that at least there's, uh, you know, rats left. Um, but, and then we could, we could probably anchor down that we might have to take out some of the rock only because, you know, well, frequently it's, it's, um, I mean, the waterproofing is critical here anyway because right. it's right near the river. And you know what Well, this is there. really high, but wherever there's ledge, Relatively there's speaking. water. Ledge equals water, always. So mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter. You have to waterproof this thing because it's going to 
I mean, just, just in the time that we opened these up and then went back uh, like four or five days later, it was noticeably drier, right? Because we opened up and allowed that air to get out of there. And also, so, so when, when did you actually open these up? Because you did have that one period of like four or five days of like constant rain and then nothing. Yeah, every time I, we, you know, these, <laughs> so the ones that were opened up before um, were really just floorboards taken out of the way and then we put them back down again. Mm -hmm. um, so every time I went back there, the soil was visibly damp, right? But well, this time it was open for about, it was a couple of days after we had the meeting here that we opened it up. Yeah, I wasn't here with that meeting. Uh -huh. Well, it was the 24th. Right, well, I left that meeting early. Well, the thing is, is the code requires that any crawl space be ventilated. So you have to mm -hmm. provide a certain amount of ventilation no matter what. Mm -hmm. The right. ventilation isn't hard, but I mean, just the fact that you've got to put some sort of proper foundation. Yeah, we need something that's, that's you know, going to merit the investment of the owner. To work. So that's, that's the wood, wood portion. Um, I don't know what to do with the third portion in terms of attempting to save that. Well, I, I, I guess the thing is, is that, and let me throw this out to the board. Uh, basically, what we now need to, I, I think we have an idea, or everybody has an idea, a fairly decent idea of the conditions that we're dealing with. So the question really becomes, and what we now need to do is see what the applicant wants to, what they're proposing. But before we do that, let me, let me ask uh, the board members, do we want independent verification of some of these conditions or some of bodies. I, I mean, I think the conditions are pretty clear from the, what the applicants have submitted. Um, I want to discuss a little bit further the proposal for sort of next steps to determine how uh, reasonable they would be, I guess, given the conditions. You know, I mean, I think one concern that I would have would be if we moved in the direction of, you know, retaining the, the shape and the form and the exterior materials and then, you know, rebuilding from the inside <laughs> back outside again, what would be the potential variables that could arise that would change that through the process? You know, I mean, and my question regarding the foundation was, are we going to be in a condition where the size of the entire building has to change or the footprint of the building has to change due to the issues with the ledge or anything else like that? Um, and then there's the question of well, how to address the brick portion of it, which is a pretty, um, you know, significant part of the building. Uh, but to Al's point, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with what we've seen so far as far as the conditions that are being reported. Yeah, um, in terms of the conditions, I found the conditions pretty grim. Um, where, you know, the, I was going to say where the rubber hits the road, but here's where the wood hits the Where the wood hits 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 the so called foundation, the so called jerry, jerry rigged foundation. Um, I don't find that we're conditioned to be, you know, I think that's the tail wagging the dog. I think that this chunk here is the chunk that, I mean, visually on Market Street, this is the chunk that makes this building. This is almost a material. I mean, you know, and if that's somehow incorporatable or some materials from it are incorporatable into a future alternative. I'd like then to discuss the alternatives that are available here, but that's just, you know, like continuing design development. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I would interject right now is that, that the intention is not 
is to still end up with a cottage building that looks like it does. I mean, it's not as if we're trying to, you know, enlarge it or doing like that. To right. The my my issue concern was more that it might well, have to change. Well, the enlargement is smaller. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The there, there is a, the center the roof, roof would push, push up. Very, but but the other thing is it is not to do with the ledge, but to do with insulation mm -hmm. and energy code. That could read easily force us to enlarge it a little bit. Because in a place like this, I mean, you, you barely have code size for the toilet, mm -hmm. which is where we're planning on keeping it. So, all right. Well, well, um, I mean, no, a, a I, new scheme, it's not. no, but we're gonna, you know, we're trying to use this little space. But in any case, so there's so little room there. That <laughs> no, once you've insulated could, maybe, it's a toilet um, nut. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, so, so that, w I've that got would a toilet be a that's tighter than that right now. <laughs> It's fine for me because I'm small. I don't know. <laughs> um, the, you know, in terms of the insulation and the amount that it adds to the volume and the size of the building, since that's on all on the perimeter, um, you know, I mean, we had experienced that with James's building at 178 Main, and you know that. You know how much it increase it. You know maybe eight inches. Yeah, well, proportionally you know, it will increase the same amount. But it's proportional. But it's proportional. But it's proportional. But it's proportional. It's proportional, and it's really not a huge proportion. I mean, it's it's right. really maybe it's maybe as much as eight inches, if that. Well, I think we do a combination of cavity and exterior. Yeah. Because we're not too many as much on the exterior as they did there. Um, yeah. Then also, I mean, he was trying to achieve passive house right. levels, right. Right, which is well above what the energy code calls for. No, I know that, but I, I don't know what level they're looking for. Um, well, the thing is, is that you get something like polyisocyanurate. Our value is, I think, double that of that insulation. So you can, you can really thin it down. Yeah, so I mean, you're probably not too as much as you did. Yeah. A lot of people object to that, so that's the only problem. I can convince them that it affects the air quality. I'm not right. saying that these clients do, but and other, there other is projects we work that on, it, that it, people say, you know, I, I but, understand. But they say, no, what? They say, no. They say, no, to what? They will not, not let us use it, especially. Spray foam. They, yeah. they won't let us use it. Well, it's not spray foam, it's, uh, it's a board. Oh, I'm sorry, I think you're checking. Uh, no, no, not the spray. Okay. Uh, Polyisocyanurine. Uh, I think it's made by Dow or Corning, one of those two. But it's like an R6.5 per inch. Mm -hmm. And Dow is the name, of course, you can trust. Yeah, but yeah, we're not we're looking to get it to the trash. Yeah, 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 bad joke. Um, you know, I, I, I think, you know, ultimately, you know, you have to have a sound, sound foundation. You don't have one here. You've got crap. And so the thing is, what do you replace it with that's sound, that has the ventilation, that has the water uh, resistance, et cetera? And then what are the alternatives for building above it that as close as possible replicate the appearance what's there now? Or, or something similar with you know, some minor modifications, because some of the stuff that's there now Stuff that you want to get rid of anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we're not trying. We're, I, I think it's, we're, we're not, not talking about true replica. You know. Right. Well, we're not. We're not, for example, proposing to replicate that when they remove the original windows and put in the vinyl, that they flushed out the, the trim around it and, and then put in lumber. Like we're not trying to, to do that. We're trying to get it back to you know, yeah. looking yeah. decent. Okay. How about you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's already been said, but um, I would like to know what the next steps are, how, we, how you would propose remedying this issue. Um, I mean, to leave it on the foundation that it's on, it's going to fall down. So that's not in our interest, the owners. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'd like to see your ideas. Okay. I, I think that um, the next step is uh, I would suggest uh, another workshop where you you can propose uh, what you would like to do 
Uh, I think that that will be the next step. Um, the other thing is is that uh, there, I would assume that we're going to wind up going with a, a type one for secret. Talking about demolition of uh, yeah. Well, we're talking about virtual demolition. Yeah, we're talking about actual demolition. In this case, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I think we're, we're probably going to end up with the type one for secret. Yeah, yeah and, and and so certainly one of the things which I, I would request at this particular time is that uh, you build documentation of the existing conditions because I think that we probably want to report uh, to show why you know we would allow demolition of this structure um, and uh, is there any anybody any professional help that we would want should we uh, ask for an escrow I don't know about asking for an escrow whether it's an escrow for us or whether it's a request to the uh, to the owner here that there be you know, very extensive documentation of what is there. And I mean very extensive documentation, materials and, you know, and, and things like that, you know, things like, you know, cut nails versus rock nails. Well, it becomes a question of whether we hire a consultant to do that or if they can prepare that documentation. Um, I think given the fact, the level of staff that we have, um, I think that if the owner authorizes that to be done and we are satisfied with the eventual work product, I would prefer to see that because it's something that they might have to prepare as part of the, you know, a type one the EAF or right. for the So to be clear, you're saying that we can prepare this documentation or that the owner would need to hire an outside? Well, the question really is is whether or not uh, the owner has authorized you to spend time doing that. Oh. Well, oh. moving forward, we're going to obviously have to get back when we talk about that. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah sure. So I, I think that essentially that's what we're explaining is that uh, we, we are going to need documentation mm -hmm. Uh, as part of uh, an environmental impact statement. Uh, and so I think that we're comfortable with you guys doing it as long as we ultimately approve the final product. But it becomes uh, a question to the owner uh, if he's ready to uh, or if he wants to authorize you guys to do it. Right. If not, then we'll probably be seeking uh, escrow account so that we can hire our own consultant to do that. I, okay, I understand. Uh, so, I mean, we'll obviously speak with the client, but I don't um, of see that being an initiative at all. Okay. So I think, anybody have any other comments, questions, or things that they would like to I, and also the sense I get from the comments, now I'll throw this one thing out and then Sean, you're going to say something. Uh, but I, I do believe that we will try and uh, salvage as much as as could be gotten from the, the structure. Yeah, I would, you know, like very, I would agree with that. Rotten very ledgers. <laughs> <laughs> you, are those for you? Yeah. <laughs> you have a collection? Uh, <laughs> rotten ledgers. He wants the rotten ledgers. <laughs> Rotten ledgers, they're not there. They're, they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but they make we'll such good kindling. The, uh, <laughs> the Putnam History Museum. As long as you're not <laughs> growing edible plants into it. <laughs> but don't let yeah, because you don't know what, what the most pressure tree for that. Um, our next workshop meeting is on the 28th. Okay. Give you a touch mark. I would say that. Um, Realistically, getting the report like that together and getting oh no, not true. Oh, no, 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 just no, if you no, wanted to report, but, but yeah, <laughs> if you wanted to talk more about design and going plan, forward with like design, that, that's just our next day of the workshop day. Okay. Um, well, so let's ask the question: uh, Do you want to have uh, get together again on the twenty eighth uh, so that we can? Review what you're proposing to do with the property or with the building. Sure. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's two Wednesdays, Wednesdays from today. Yeah. I mean, is that enough time? I mean, even to, to give you just an opportunity to, you know, debrief with the client and talk about that. that exactly. Will be before that. The direction it's moving in and is this activity whatever ends up happening with this i know that you have a whole sort of campus worth of buildings that you're working on over there so <laughs> you know if this is something that ends up taking a little bit longer is that going to prevent anything else from moving forward or because have you submitted have you su you haven't submitted an application to us yet right this is this is all still just we a just workshop. a referral okay yeah, yeah, yeah but it's all we haven't submitted it from the application so okay. um so if you need to, if you want to split the buildings into separate applications or something like that, because we've already discussed the other yeah. two. Um, I think we'll probably want to go forward with it as a whole, okay. especially because there's some elements that we're doing that tie everything together, and I think it's probably uh, at this point. Um, but again, you know, we'll speak with the clients and see if they sure. have some, you know, timing issues that they want us to think about as well. Yeah, you might want to caucus with them and get, you know, get a yeah. feeling of what their priorities are. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. 28th. Okay. See you in a couple weeks. <laughs> Thanks for the update. <laughs> we'll be back. Did you two do the digging yourselves? No, no, we have some. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, you, know, you, can't, you can't do that because you gotta, you gotta, someone's got to be watching because it was contractor was hoping that there would be gold or something worthwhile at the bottom of the <laughs> careful digging the brush and stuff because it was really, you know, it's kind of getting quite dicey. But this was uh, If you ever need a really good archaeologist, mm -hmm. by the way, this was I, yeah. I, I know the best. Okay. <laughs> so this, this is looking in this corner, so this is the, the these are the joists and there's the rocks underneath them. <sighs> so that was the, I mean, we have a lot of photographs of that's whole building. Well, that, that, that'll like that'll 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 no, didn't find it. Yeah. Just joking. And, and that'll, you know. We have a lot of photographs. Th that's good. And, and uh, the maps and so on. Yeah, yeah. it's like Jenga Foundation. Mm. Yeah. Don't yeah. pull the wrong brick. It'll all fall. Well, the one was interesting is when we were taking the dirt out, they have all, lots of small roots and stuff in there, too. But then the, the oh. cheeky just dropped. So you could just pull it out. So it's like, is that what is that what is that <laughs> <laughs> That's a little scary. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Good to see you guys. Now it's 9.25, so we're only five minutes behind. Five minutes behind, even though we did have two people booked for the so, so this really mm -hmm. should have been probably 40, so. So actually, we're still 15 minutes ahead. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We had two things at 9.20. Yes. Okay. I don't know. Are you from Verizon? Um, I'm representing uh, Handelsman for 95 Main Street. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, why don't you come down because... Do you mind if we have a quick... No, it won't, it won't take long. long. It won't take long. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, do we need to move need back to, yeah, into okay. regular sessions? No, okay. no. I, I think that basically it, it's we're just informing him what we did and why we did it. I don't think we need to be in a formal session to do that. We're not going to vote on anything as soon as I can find it. Oh, 95. Okay. So here is the issue. All right. The issue is uh, you're proposing a number of things. Mm -hmm. Uh, remove and replace all the windows. Yeah. The entire building. Yeah, 42. Okay. And uh, I'm assuming that these are the windows you're replacing. Um, yeah. The vinyl. Vinyl. Yeah. Right. That's not a lot. Okay. Because right now there's like, most of them are, well, half of them are vinyl right now. Okay. But on but Main Street, they're all wooden. Okay. Like on the Main Street side. All right. Well, uh, yeah. And <coughs> because in the past, we, we've had, uh, when I was on the board, uh, we had Mr. Handelsman restore that little, the little scabby area on the side. He started making some changes without getting approvals. Okay, so that's and probably where they started doing that work. Yes, without and, and we did, right. And we told them to stop, and he uh, said, okay, well, I'll put back what I got. So anyways, 
But so vinyl windows are not allowed. What about like a vinyl clad wooden interior? Because you're in the national district, right? Mm -hmm. National district. Uh, uh, do, do, do. National register windows shall be wood uh, and true divided lights or perm permanent exterior and interior models. That's uh, as uh, simulate simulated divided light. That's the uh, And any stone window shall be in a color to match the window sash. Exterior vi uh, vinyl clad windows, wood windows are permitted only in the color historically consistent with the building. And part of an improved scheme. So, short answer is yes. Okay. Final plan. Right. Cool. Okay, uh, that and also you want to entomb. Uh, Can I just point out one more thing though yeah. regarding that? We also say that the painted finish is required on public facades. So the vinyl would have to be painted? It would have to be a painted finish on the public facade. Okay, so we can get like a pre-finished color that's appropriate and that would work? Which would we consider to be the public facades? Uh, the main street side. Because the west side's kind of exposed, like walking the issue, up on the main street. Is. Yeah, that's good. That's and there's a yeah. good five windows on that side. Yeah. But probably, most of the windows are Probably not the south side, but definitely yeah. the west side. Yeah. Yeah, the west we have to see that the south side is visible from the street. Well, it's not a, um, they, they come in a pre-finish, so I mean, I, I'm sure that wouldn't be too hard to get Mr. Handelsman to pay the extra for that. I mean, if that's what it takes. Okay. Um, also, we're, we're very curious in how you're going to entomb the asbestos society. Mm -hmm. uh, we do uh, the same thing right here in Catherine's. Um, we take one by four bridging and we'll secure that over the studs and tie back over that and then we, we put the siding on top of the tie back. So how much does that add to the? Three quarters of an inch. The, it would be the one by four bridging on the, the flat side so it would stick out an extra three quarters of an inch plus deciding another. So you cut into the asbestos side? No, no, we wouldn't. No. That's the thing. We don't want to touch the asbestos. We just want to, we'll, we'll okay, put so screws. Okay, so if you put a one by four bridging on top of the asbestos, right. so you're ready, what, you're ready like an inch out. Yeah. Okay, and then you're adding the, um, in this case, a cementitious board yeah. on top of that. Mm -hmm. So you're adding like almost about Three two quarter minutes. plus another, maybe an inch and a half. Around there would be probably closer to two inches. So, so you're really then having to bump out the trimming around the windows quite a lot. Um, well, the yeah, we would have the, the bridging would go around their windows as well to have a nailer for all the trim, uh -huh. and the window would set you know at the proper, and then there would get you know at the proper, you know, on the outside, and then we'd get the extension jams on the inside. Right. So essentially, what you're what you're telling us is that you, you're going to have these wood strips, furring strips, mm -hmm. applied horizontally. Could be vertically, following the studs. Okay. On the building, yeah. So then, how do you attach? What do you attach the siding to in between the studs? Well, that would be 16 inches on center. So you would nail your siding, typically 16 inches on center, into the studs anyway. So we would just screw those bridging into the stud, and then we would nail the siding right to the bridging. Well, it's, al it's almost like furring out the stud, except that it's not on the stud itself, it's right. on the asbestos siding that's exactly in between. Right. Mm -hmm. I know, but it basically the siding is attached only at 16 inches on the center. Well, that's I think that's pretty typical. Okay. Typical is more like 12 inches on the center, because you're talking about nails, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah, so you have like a 
gap in there. So what's filling up the gap? Yeah. Um, that and also, you know, I, I would assume that when the board and when the siding comes together someplace, uh, basically you've got the, the thickness of uh, one by four. Yeah, fair enough. In order to nail the two ends. Yep, on um, on the on all of the other siding projects we do, we nail to the studs and you know residential, sixteen inches on center. So. I don't think that, I mean, I don't think the nailing is an issue. I mean, as far as the entombing the asbestos, I mean, that, I think that would be the only issue. But as far as nailing it on 16 inches on the center, we've done the same process right right below, and we haven't had any issues, and all the siding we've ever nailed has been 16 inches on the center. Okay, uh, well, I, I think what I'd like to see is uh, what the recommendation of the manufacturer of the okay. cement siding is, as far as the nailing pattern. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's a lot of information that's missing. And so we tabled the application because we felt it was incomplete. Okay. So since those are the two things, we're interested in seeing the detail on how the site you're proposing to add the siding. Okay. Uh, as well as, you know, we don't feel that the vinyl windows are acceptable. Okay. And also you mentioned that it's PVC trim, which similarly in the National District is not permitted. Okay, so so there is no um, there's no there's no way to use any PVC trim on above even up at that height where it's not visible. Well, are you talking about only on the on the west side? Yeah, it would only be on the west side. On the south side, on the main street side, the only work being done there is the windows. Now on the left side, that's where you would have all the trim, you know, with the sill, and there would probably be a fascia board and then a corner board. But all of that work is above Catherine, so that's 15 feet above the sidewalk. It would be pretty hard to tell, I'm not sure. There wouldn't be any on the front on the main street side? No, we're not even going to paint that. That's just going to be a straight replacement window. Um, removing the quarter round on the inside, putting the new window in, but yeah, there's no work being done on the main street side, just the west side. Okay. And no work is being done to the retail windows? Um, no, this so is so this is on the, the this second is, and third floor. Yeah, for the second and third floor, I think yeah, whatever above retail, um, then all the west, and then the back side of the building as well. There's a small section where the asbestos siding continues, a 12 foot section, and there's some windows there that would also get replaced and siding would continue back there, return. Yeah, we'd also need cut sheets on the windows. Manufacturers yeah, I'm gonna get. Um, I'm gonna talk to Steve, and we're gonna get. Uh, I'm gonna get all the prices together for um, vinyl clad with um, a finish, and we'll figure out. Does does the, does the color need to be approved by you guys? No, we don't okay. get color. So, so it just has to be a finished, a colored finish vinyl window. We'll get. I'll get that to him and then the nailing schedule. In the standards, it says that if it is a vinyl window, then it needs to be in a pr approved historic color. Okay. So yeah, and, and, I, and you know, since historic. we don't have, we don't have we, any say over color, I don't know why we put that in there. That's one of the reasons we're Literally revisiting. Make the rules. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're revisiting the design standards. So then what, so what exactly then are we requesting that they submit a paintable finish or yes. a pre-finished painted finish? Either. Well, uh, uh, by pre-finished, you're talking about uh, something that's primed. There, it's a, it's a, it's a vinyl and I'm pretty sure it's dyed, it's not painted. Exactly. So yeah. that means that it's a permanent finish. Yeah, yeah. it would be permanent. Right, but what's required for it to be a painted finish? On the, on the Main Street side. On Main Street adjacent. 
which would be the front, and it would be the side of a cap frame. Uh, I, I think I'm willing, since our standards do also, in fact, say. Either way, on the um, well, I'm sorry. this is uh, duplication of painted elements and non original materials, fiberglass polymer allowed eight foot above ground level. Do well, that would be yes. Okay. So I think that that side, you know, uh, I'm willing to to vote for. Um, also, I mean, there's also a number of windows on the main street side, and ideally they would be the same window with the same finish. Well, uh, but uh, that's what uh, uh, you know, Sean's raising is that the fact that they said that in the guidelines say that the, uh, the, the side facing main street mm -hmm. needs to be uh, painted uh, a painted finish, okay. and uh, I don't think that they were. <coughs> I'm pretty sure that we were not talking about a painted vinyl side. We're talking about a wood window painted finish mm -hmm. on the main street side. Okay. And you're saying that the existing windows there are wood? On the main street side, yeah, all wood. But pretty much everywhere else, they're 100% vinyl, interior, exterior. Okay. Why are you replacing the windows on the front? Are they insufficient? Yeah. Fair. They're all ready to go, and you know, Andrew's going you know, he's ready to put the money into it, but he wants to try to stay away from, you know, any sort of wood product if he can, because he's willing to put a lot of money into it now, but he's not trying to upkeep it every five years, you know. So if he can do it once, he'll, you know, that's what he's aiming for. Well, I, I think that because of the sensitivity of the front facade. Uh, I think that we're going to have to insist that it be wood. Okay. Uh, and uh, if we can have some sort of documentation as far as what the problems are for tearing out the existing windows. Okay. So um, because be, yeah, some pictures. Uh, because certainly one of the things, that is depending depending on how well people have maintained. A lot of windows can be uh, rehabilitated. Okay. I mean, um, there are, well, except I would assume that they're all single glazed, and so. Yeah. All right. We'd need a little bit more information to justify okay. trashing. Not a problem. So we'll get some pictures of some damaged windows, nailing schedule for the fiber cement board. Okay. And if you can also bring pictures of all the facades, just wide shots of okay. the facades that we're talking about, so yeah, to sure. sort of point things out during the meeting. Yeah, because, well, yeah, because the, the other thing that is that, you know, we turned this over to the building inspector, and we got to be able to say, okay, these windows are going to be the vinyl clad, these are going to be wood, these are going to be so and so. So we need pictures of all of the you know, the facades where the windows are in fact being replaced. Okay. Right. We can do that. Cool. Excellent. Um, so the next meeting is in July. Alrighty. I can look that up somewhere. July what? The uh, second Twelve. Wednesday. The second Wednesday, yeah. July 12th. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So we'll get everything in order and uh, we'll see you guys then. Very also, good. you can access our um, agendas, like our meeting schedule and okay. agendas. All of that is on the village website in addition to this manual for the design standards. That's in PDF form on the village's website. Great. So if I'll you have any questions, you can reference that or email us. I will do. All right. Well, thank you very right. much. Thank, thank you. Nice to meet you guys. Thanks. Take care. Okay, guys, 120, 426.